Friday morning devotions, and uh, today we're going to jump in and do something that we talked about last week. That is, we're going to now not just talk about the idea of it in, all in your mind, but today we're actually going to address that mind, or that today I, I'm referring to as your hard drive. Before we do that and get started this morning on the lesson, if you would, just take a moment. We've been talking about summertime events and their favorites for summertime. So here's today's question. If you would, comment down below and let me know. Um, what kind of vegetables are you currently getting from your garden or from your friend's garden that you're enjoying right now? What kind of vegetables are you getting from your garden or your friend's garden that you're enjoying right now? So what, uh, what's the, uh, the juicy vegetables that you're eating? Uh, we've been enjoying uh, zucchini. Um, we've got radishes growing. Uh, we've had friends that give us zucchini, and uh, folks have dropped off zucchini here at our offices. And so uh, we've also been enjoying some uh, um, small tomatoes, uh, grape tomatoes, um, little bitty jobbies, just amazing taste. Um, that's some of the things out of our garden and some of our friends' gardens. So uh, tell me just real quick, like, what are you enjoying out of your, out of your garden or out of your friends' gardens uh, currently as the summer is now beginning to produce fruit from the gardens that you've planted. So so comment down below, let me know that. This Devo is from the series, Let Freedom Ring. It is the last video, the last de uh, devotion for this series. And today I wanna to talk to you about what lurks on your hard drive. What lurks on your hard drive? Before I do, I wanna make a clarification that I meant to make last week. And I apologize that I didn't do it, but I really need you to listen up. This is extremely important because I want to clarify something that I was talking about and what I meant to say last week as well. There are some of you who are listening currently who are really struggling. What I've been talking about from the idea of things that are bothering you, things that are um, going on inside your, your heart and mind, uh, those things are really, really strugglesome. And they're probably beyond what you feel like you can even uh, survive. As a result of that, I want to be very, very clear. My goal in the devotions is for the average everyday person who has not been sidetracked or derailed by some difficult, difficult hurt. I'm not talking about the hurts that happen that seem pretty harsh and pretty hard and we get derailed a little bit for. I'm talking about things that have been ongoing for sometimes months and years. If you're in that position, this is not intended to be some type of uh, self-help or mental health course. This is intended to be a devotion that helps you understand how God can help you actually keep away from some of the issues you have and maybe not get to a place where you need to, to, to move forward with someone. But if you're in a place where you cannot seem to move forward, where you're really stuck, I encourage you to call a counselor or a pastor. I prefer a Christian counselor, um, but I do know this, that sometimes you can get by, uh, I mean, you can get through th situations by talking to any counselor because these individuals are trained to help you. And definitely as a pastor's, um, that take the time to make sure that they share um, the knowledge they have and then can apply uh, the true spiritual issues um, to your situation as well. Because in the long run, um, as Scripture says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? And so I want to say to you, you don't want to be at a place where you get healthy but lose your soul. I mean, in the long run, what have you gained if you just get better and you don't get Jesus? So... Uh, but it is good to get better because sometimes when you get better, you can see Jesus better, which then can take you to the relationship with him. So now let's dive in and talk about our hard drive. Um, remember last week we talked about the passage, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. Um, and so we gave attention to the fact that things come from our head and from our mind, um, from our heart, from our belief systems that really derail us. And when we see those things, we need to deal with them because the struggle we have that we think is something else oftentimes comes from what we're thinking. Today, I want to talk to you about a couple of different things. And I want to start with a statement from Gary Smalley from years ago. He said, fear is the mother of all negative emotions. So my question is, what is wrought by our fears? What's going on inside our heart and our head? What is it that comes when we really are living in a life afraid of whatever we're afraid of? I'm not talking about afraid of spiders and that kind of stuff, okay? I'm talking about some of the life issues that come along as a result of our fears. And I want to talk about those today. I want to suggest a list to you, not necessarily a complete or exhaustive list, but a good group of items that we hold in our hard drives, which derail us and create negative emotions and fear for us. So one of the most enlightening and disturbing phrases I think I've ever, ever, ever in my life ever heard was said by a man by the name of Andy Stanley. I'm sure others have said it. But this is what he was talking about when he's talking about this issue of what's going on inside of our heart. 
You know you have issues with someone when you're always having arguments in your head with them and they completely agree with you and then you end up winning the argument. <laughs> and you know in real life that wouldn't happen. That shows you that there's something lurking inside your mind that needs to be dealt with. So if you think about it, that's pretty scary because many of you, including me, sometimes have conversations. You wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning having conversations in your mind. So it's pretty scary when you realize sometimes just how deep our struggle and how far our struggle can take us. So here are some thoughts on how to get rid of bad memory on your hard drive when it comes to some of the issues that are going on. The first issue I want to talk about that's in your hard drive oftentimes is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. In other words, as a result of a hurt that you've put in your memory, you've been hurt by someone and that person did not ask for permission, did not ask for forgiveness, did not even take you into account. And as a result, they hurt you. And so as a result of that, you can't seem to get rid of it. It becomes a memory spot in that hard drive of yours and that disc running around up there in your hard drive, in your heart, where your belief systems are. And so I want to give you some thoughts about what it means to forgive and what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not necessarily forgetting. It doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Forgiveness doesn't mean you're excusing. The person may still have to answer for what they did. Forgiveness doesn't mean the person is off the hook. They may actually have to face legal action, depending upon what they've chosen. And forgiving is not about the other person. Forgiving is about your freedom. If you are hung up on what's going to happen with the other person, you will stay in the prison that you hold the key to. You hold the key to the freedom that you can find if you're only willing to forgive. You can practice forgiveness regularly. Matter of fact, Scripture says this: Don't let uh, sin or uh, don't uh, sin by letting your anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Um, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. So you see, what you and I have to realize is, is that when we're holding on to stuff and we're not forgiving, that you and I are actually setting our hard drives up for failure. We're beginning to fragment our hard drive, if it's a computer term uh, that, I, that you use. Uh, they fragment. In other words, things get all over the place. And what happens sometimes is, is your, un your unforgiveness actually leads you to other issues. And let me talk to you about a few of those issues of unforgiveness. The first one is bitterness. I mean, you just become bitter. You put that away. You're not going to deal with it. You're going to hang on to it because it's important to hang on to. For whatever reason, you feel like that life is held by holding on to that, that hurt. And so as a result, you won't forgive and bitterness sets in. And I'm just telling you, your hard drive really messes up when bitterness sets in. Secondly, anger. Boy, have you ever noticed that you can be angry on the drop of a hat? Most times when you can become angry so easily, it's because on your hard drive, there's some unforgiveness or there's some not dealt with hurt that you have not bothered to deal with on the front side. And now as a result, Satan does have a foothold in your life. And so he can use your anger against so many different people. And when you hold that anger over years and years and years, it actually leads to the previous, which is bitterness. It's self-perpetuating, self-feeding pattern of emotions that are driven, in my estimation, to be honest with you, in fear. And your fear is that person or that thing or that circumstance is never going to have to answer for what it did to you. And the reality is it may never answer. They may never answer. It is not your call. Because what does this fear, what does this anger and bitterness actually lead to? It fuels this next item that's part of the unforgiveness factor. And that is revenge. In other words, the reason you're hanging on to all of this is because someday, some way, somehow, in some situation where the, where the world is truly fair, which by the way isn't true, that person will pay. I just got to be honest with you, until all of us face God, we don't know what we're going to pay. And so God asks you and I to make sure that we hold on to what he tells us to hold on to, to let go of what he tells us to let go of, and let him take revenge. He says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. Okay? You and I are not to be the one who does the vengeance. We are the one who needs to be doing the forgiving. Not again excusing or letting someone off the hook but by being honest and, f and truthful about the fact that we're setting ourselves up for a, pris uh, a prison. What's interesting is to see the dynamic in the lives of how easily, I mean, we see this dynamic in other people. We can pick it out, can't we? Oh, that person's angry. That person's bitter. That person is unforgiving. But it's so amazing how you and I are blind to our own sense of entitlement that we are okay that we don't have anything to deal with and that we need to be serious about helping someone else fix their issues. 
when oftentimes it's a mirror you need, okay, not a passage of scripture or some belief system to fix someone else. Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged for with what judgment you judge others, it will be judged back to you. And he says, why do you bother with the speck in your brother's eye when you have a log in your own? You hypocrite first, take care of the log in your own eye and you'll see clearly to take care of the speck in your brother's eye. The reason why your hard drive stays clogged up is because you do not deal with what's going on inside of you first, and therefore you allow it to set you into a prison full of unforgiveness where bitterness, anger, and vengeance can lurk and can come out in so many different ways and oftentimes at people who are not responsible for why you're hurting. The next issue on our hard drive that's very critical for you and I to look at is greed. This is not an easy one to see sometimes. Normally, it's all dressed up in the word more. Rockefeller, the famous Rockefeller family, a name of influence and affluence, was once asked, how much is enough? And he basically answered, a man finds himself satisfied with some, but no matter how much he has, there's always one more thing that he wants. And it's always wrapped up in more. How much is enough, he said? All of it and then more. That's greed. Listen, some of you have like 15,000 outfits in your, in your closet. You have like 20,000 pairs of shoes. You have three cars and only drive one. You have everything in the world. You have a boat you never take to the lake because you take the other boat there or you take your, um, your, your other items uh, that you take, uh, little jet skis. And I mean, you're all set up with all this stuff that you use, but you don't use, but use some, don't use others. Let me tell you something. I'm not against having those things. What I'm saying is this. If more is your language and enough is not, you might be struggling with this on your hard drive. Greed. Greed. Greed always wants more. It is not satisfied until it has more. More beauty, more money, more influence, more success, and the list could go on and on and on. And the saddest reality is that the more only causes less. It causes less contentment, less friendships, less loving of our neighbor, less patience, less understanding, less true conversations, less of the things that we need to thrive as human beings. And instead, we have filled our lives with more. Let me tell you some of the mores that some of you are struggling with right now that you need to realize is greed. More politics. That's right. It's just a form of greed sometimes. More hate. Yep, greed. Yep, greed. You are greedy to hate more and more. You're looking for more reasons to greed. More false religion. You're looking for ways to fix your Christianity. And it's in a book. It's in a weekend. It's in a conference. It's in a concert. It's in something besides Jesus. So you hope you find Jesus. Let me tell you something. You need to find Jesus. Not more false religion. Not more false claims by somebody on television, somebody on the radio, even somebody on Facebook. Take what I say or anyone else who speaks to you and compare it to Scripture, the whole Scripture, not the part that says do this and you'll have all kinds of stuff. Whether that's goods, whether that's money, whether that's all the other. Your marriage will be perfect if you just do everything right with Jesus. Let me tell you something. Two humans that don't get along don't get along even as Christians sometimes. So we oftentimes find more false religion, more false belief systems while we're seeking for the greed of more more self-centeredness, more judgmentalism, more, 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 more. And again, I could go on and on and on, but I'll stop because I'm becoming weary of thinking about all the mores that unfortunately plague our society. Now, my third hard drive item, my last hard drive item this morning that lurks in there that we need to deal with is very similar to the greed, but oftentimes has more to do with how we feel about ourselves rather than what we possess. It's called jealousy. It's what causes some of the issues that we're unforgiving about. We are greedy about things because of our jealousy. Jealousy cannot be satisfied because it always wants what someone else has, what someone else is liked about. They are liked more than you are and you're jealous. They're more successful and you're jealous. They have more money and you're jealous. They have a nice house. They have a nice car. They have a car, uh, the, the church, uh, the job, the whatever it is, they have it and you're jealous and you want some of it. And again, I could go on and on and on. Matter of fact, if you sat down, you could make a whole list of these items. As I've done this, it's brought up stuff in your mind you could think of. And you could sit down and make lists and lists and lists of the items of unforgiveness and um, uh, greed and jealousy. 
Jealousy, again, cannot be satisfied. The whole time that you're feeling jealous, it then feeds that anger. You're angry that God doesn't give you what someone else has got. As a result, that jealousy makes you angry at God because he's not giving you all you want. You see how this stuff just kind of keeps going around and around? And again, it goes back to that phrase I use about computers. It fragments our hard drive. And so we need to defrag it. We need to defrag the hard drive. Look that up on the internet. Figure out what that is. Defragging takes what's going on all over the place and it brings it all back together. It cleans out what needs to be cleaned out and puts things in proper order so it works. Whew, man, anger, unforgiveness, greed, Whew, man, jealousy. That's a lot of stuff, isn't it? Doesn't it make you tired? Some of you are tired of being tired, aren't you? Some of you are tired of being angry. Some of you are tired of always being on edge. Some of you are tired of always having anxiety. Anxiety can be a part of your body, but it can also be a part of what's on your hard drive. And as a result of your hard drive, you can have that anxiety, not a result of what you're struggling with in your physical being. Because you're unforgiving, and so therefore you're anxious about the other person getting ahead. Or you're greedy, and so you're anxious about what you can't have. Or you're jealous, and you're anxious because someone has something you want. And as a result of that, your hard drive is full of stuff. Well, I have the cure. That's right, I have the cure. It's the cure for me, the one I ignore when I'm not willing to admit these things, because I have these things in my life from time to time, just like you do. And it's the cure that I don't pay attention to. It's the cure I forget. It's the cure I ignore. It's the cure I don't take advantage of. It's the cure that Jesus promised. And that is this. Forgive, love others, and trust him. Forgive, love others, and trust him. That will take care of those issues. Unforgiveness, forgive. Greed, trust him that he's given you what you need and not what someone else has. Love, it will help you not be jealous. How can you be jealous of those you truly love? When you love someone, you're happy they have what they have. You celebrate the fact that they're able to get a new car, even though yours is rusting. You can celebrate with others when you have that. On the cross, Jesus used these powerful words that can set you and I in a place where we can let freedom ring. Here it is, Father. These are these people, they're, they're, they're crucifying me. He looks down and says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. When Jesus could have unleashed the entire full power of God, he could have spoke the words and 10,000 angels would have come. He could have easily had a simple thought and killed every person standing around that cross, every enemy that came up and nailed him to that cross. He could have done that. Every religious leader, he could have made their minds go completely out of touch simply by thinking. And he did none of that. Instead, he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. Listen, you don't even realize why you do the things you do, let alone you understanding why other people do it. We're so hung up in trying to figure out why someone else needs our answers instead of looking in the mirror and realizing you and I need Jesus's answers. So you and I have issues. And sometimes when we're arguing with that person in our mind, it's nothing more than exposing our issues. It's no, no more than just realizing that you and I are at a place where we need to be willing to forgive, to love, to be understanding, to seek peace. Jesus said, by this, all men will know you're my disciples. If you have love one for another. Jesus said, if you love God and love others, you will, command, you will keep all the commandments. You don't believe me? Go read Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Understand this, you are a sinner and that other people around you are sinners. Therefore, it's very easy for us to follow these patterns. And Satan loves to encourage us when we're in these patterns. Don't pretend it can't happen to you. That's a problem in your hard drive. It's an arrogance as a result of your thinking. To know that someone is hurting you and then to deal with that hurt in a way that pleases God and honors and glorifies him and trusts that he knows what to do. When you do that, instead of sitting around wondering why people are hurting you and keeping track of the hurt and keeping all this stuff going, to keep track of what people have, to keep track of why God is there, I mean, to, to keep constant thinking about why God isn't giving you something. When you have that kind of running around inside that hard drive, you and I realize that we're just causing ourselves more trouble. So what are you harboring today? I want to talk to you that are just really honestly getting a, a little hold right now as you're beginning to listen. What are, what are you harboring? Have you been hurt by church people? Is that what it is? 
Or have you been hurt or wronged by someone you love or someone you thought you could trust? Have you found yourself being more angry than not angry? More on edge? Do you, have you discovered this secret chamber in your heart that harbors the thoughts of the failure of your enemies? The failure of those you wish would just fail so you could at least get some satisfaction out of the fact that your vengeance has come full circle? Are you harboring those type of things? What lurks inside that hard drive of yours? Well, I want you to take time today. I want you to address it. I want you to do the work. I want you to forgive. I want you to begin to reconcile. I want you to begin to ask for forgiveness. I want you to begin to go to the people you've hurt. Go to the people who've hurt you and begin to work through these things. To forgive on the front side so you're not coming from your hurt in a way that's causing more conflict rather than causing reconciliation. Well, you and I will find freedom in our minds and in our hearts when we're willing to take on our emotions. And most of all, when we're willing to live and love like Jesus did. And after all, in the long run of things, isn't that what you're really after? Don't you really want to live like Jesus lived? Don't you really want to live in honoring of your Savior? I believe you do. I believe it's why you became a Christian if you're following him. By the way, if you're not a Christian, come follow him. A bunch of us imperfect people will show you how to blow it every so often and still know Jesus. I'm just telling you, come follow him. Investigate Jesus if you're not following him. But you know if you've decided to follow Jesus Christ, you know you want to live that way. And so today I encourage you to do the hard work, to be willing to defrag the hard drive, whatever it takes. If you need a counselor to do so or a pastor, then take the time and make the call. You and I, if we get started, we can get this thing finished. And then as these things come by and every so often hang up in our hard drive, we'll pick up on them faster and we'll get rid of them sooner. And as a result, we will let freedom ring in our life. And the freedom of Jesus Christ that Paul talked about in Galatians chapter 5. It says, you are set free. Now guard that freedom. Stay free, basically. And don't let any legalism or other trash come into your life and take it away. And so let's let freedom ring by following the design of our Savior in our everyday lives. So, hey, before we go today, tell me this. As we finish up this morning, what vegetables are you currently getting from your garden or from your friend's gardens and that you're enjoying with your meals? What veggies are you getting as this summer is now beginning to turn towards the fruitful time when a lot of our plants and veg, uh, gardens are now beginning to show fruit? We just got two dozen corn yesterday from a friend. Amazing. I'm telling you, great. See fresh corn here in Indiana. So comment down below, let me know that, all right? And don't forget to share Friday morning devotions on your social media through email. Share it with your friends. Come and watch together with your friends. And uh, as you watch together, let's all grow together and grow towards Christ so that you and I can begin to live the way he designed us to live, all right? Hey, everybody, have a great Friday. Have an amazing weekend. I appreciate you and appreciate your encouragement, all your comments, all your texts, all your prayers, all right? God bless y'all. Have a great Friday.